Password protection is beginning to fail us. Break-ins to large-scale systems, theft of credit card information, and simply getting into people's accounts, whether it's for email or banking, is becoming more commonplace. So the next frontier of security and of protection of personal information, access to devices, even access to buildings, is going to be biometric. And I have with me in the studio Nick Perkins, the Divisional Director for Identity Management at Bytes, and they represent a company called Lumidime, which is one of the world leaders in biometric security. Nick, we're seeing massive advances in biometric technology at the moment. Where is Lumidime positioned right now and where are they taking the technology? Thanks for having me, Arthur. Uh, Lumidime have a technology um, called multispectral imaging, um, which is aimed at taking a fingerprint very differently to what the traditional fingerprint sensors have been doing. Um, traditional fingerprint sensors are literally capturing a photograph of a fingerprint, storing it in a back-end system, and then down the line they will do a match against a newly acquired image. What Lumidime are doing is looking at the fingerprint um, subdermally under the skin with multiple light sources. So they're polarizing uh, the light to capture an internal um, image that, you know, that sits underneath the vein pattern of the actual fingerprint itself. Um, in this way, they're getting very high quality images, which makes their matching capability that much stronger. And most banks in South Africa are using it right now? All the banks in South Africa are using uh, the Lumidime technology in their branch. Um, they're using this predominantly to positively identify um, a person that's looking to open a bank account with them. So they will do a reference against the Home Affairs database and present the captured images against that database to make sure the person that's applying for the account is indeed who he says he is. So this could be used in ATMs as well? Yes, the, the banks are, are looking at introducing this as the next stage now. Um, it's no secret that um, issues at the ATM revolve around card skimming, um, the theft of a pin, theft of a card, people fraudulently entering uh, cards into ATM and cleaning the account out. So the banks are looking at ways to strengthen the security around the card and fingerprint technology is certainly a step in that direction. But one of the advances we're seeing from the criminal side is that they are now able to replicate fingerprints and in fact pretend to be someone by putting a latex a fingerprint that's been captured from elsewhere mm. onto their own fingers and pretending to be me. Yep, absolutely. They've, they've thought of everything. There's hundreds of uh, what we call spoofs uh, where different mechanisms of recreating a fingerprint, presenting it against a finger. And again, this is a, um, the difference between what Lumidime does um, versus some of the other normal optical fingerprint sensors. So if you presented a spoof, a really good quality copy of a, of a person's fingerprint against a normal optical sensor, it would read it and correctly match it because it's just taking a photograph again. What Lumidime's doing differently is looking for things like liveness detection. So it's making sure that the skin consistency reflects that of living tissue. It also looks for things that we call spoof technology. So it's looking for people that are trying to impersonate fingerprints and it will detect that. So while it may read the image, it will alert the system that there's a spoof detected and it will block the account. Fascinating, show us how this works. Mm, absolutely. So we've got the Lumidime sensor here. I'm just gonna show you um, a standard image capture. Um, you'll see a live feedback on the screen now. If you can present your finger there. So what you're getting there is a really clear image quality. You'll see all the little blue and green dots are the unique elements of your fingerprint the system's capturing. And that's what it turns into, um, through a fingerprint algorithm, into your unique uh, fingerprint ID, which is stored in the back end system for matching down the line. You'll also see um, a thing at the top called NIST quality. That is a rating that's used globally for fingerprint image quality. So again, if you have a really, um, uh, like an elderly person's fingerprint as an example, they have a uh, little collagen there, so the, the detail of, of the fingerprint ridges is quite limited. So you will capture an image, but you'll probably have a very low score uh, down to a four or a five. And again, that limits your ability to accurately match them down the line, which you know is just not uh, something the banks can consider. Can someone photograph this image and use my fingerprint elsewhere? Um, they, they can certainly try. Um, this specific um, fingerprint sensor will detect that as a spoof. Um, I'll replicate this quickly if you put a, a latex glove on as an example, which simulates 
uh, one of the fabrics that are used by criminals to try and spoof it. They'll recreate an image out of silicon or gelatin or clay or something like that. But if you put your finger, just put it inside there and present it. Okay, so what you can see here on the screen is it's captured your fingerprint through the latex. You've got a really poor mist quality rating because it's obviously getting a, a poor image through that glove. But more importantly, down the bottom, you'll see that the system's flagged as spoof detection. And this is absolutely paramount at um, an unmanned uh, biometric verification like an ATM where nobody's around. So guys can go there and play around, try different materials and things to simulate a fingerprint to try and get it uh, verified against somebody else's account. So the system's specifically designed to look for those um, those qualities and those attempts um, and you know notify the back-end systems of that. So Lumidime seems to be one step ahead of the criminals. Let's hope it stays that way.